Hey everybody, it's David Schwartz, Mike Field from Field Realty. We are here in the stockade for our newest listing, 19 Washington Ave. This home is nothing short of incredible, and if you're into historic homes, I can guarantee you've never seen a home in this condition from the top all the way to the bottom. So without further ado, welcome to 19 Washington. Welcome to 19 Washington Avenue. My wife and I have been the proud owners and stewards of this house for 28 years. A little about the history of this house. It was built in 1827. It was built with money made by Daniel Campbell, a fur trader in Schenectady. Daniel and his wife, Engelty Bratt Campbell, died without any children. And the question was what to do with the fortune. She had a niece that she loved, also named Angleti, who was also a widow, and she said that she would leave the fur trading fortune to her son if he changed his name to David Daniel Campbell. And he was a Skimmerhorn, which is one of the great Schenectady families. In order to do that, he had to wait several years till he reached 21, and then it took an act of the New York State Legislature in order to change his name, because it was so rare to do in those days. As soon as he inherited the fortune, he built this house for his mother, and she owned it until she passed away, at which point she left it back to her son, now named David Daniel Campbell, rather than Skimmerhorn. As you first walk into the house, one of the things you see is a mural, a welcoming mural, which was painted by the Saratoga folk artist, Tiz Goodwin. And also you notice the very elaborate parquet block floor. This went in when the house was Victorianized in the 1840s and again in the 1870s. It's interesting that David Daniel Campbell owned all three of these houses and he gave one to each of his children and this became Campbell Row. And this particular house stayed in the Campbell family until the 1940s. And we've actually known everyone who's lived in the house since then. This is the living room, and let me point out a few interesting features. Uh, one is the curved archways, on both uh, here and in the entrance to the dining room. You notice a very elaborate molding that goes with it. You also see in here the elaborate parquet floor, uh, which is a common of oak and I believe black walnut. Gives a nice detailing. Over on this side we have a uh, marble fireplace mantle. This was all Victorianized in about 1870, I should say. As we approach the dining room, you're gonna see a different parquet flooring in there. It's a little simpler what, than what's in the living room, but it's also very attractive, and I believe that's fur. Coming into the dining room, you have the large windows on the side. You have the built-in china closet over on the right with a cabinet underneath. Everybody loves an old house, but nobody loves an old kitchen. So let me describe it a little bit. Uh, it has a uh, three ovens. This one is a microwave oven and grill. It has a pastry oven, it has a convection oven. They're all by Gagano, the German manufacturer, as are the uh, top with the burners. It has four burners, it has a deep fryer, and it has a home grill. And of course, it's all granite. Uh, the floors are maple and the cabinets are maple. The built-in uh, refrigerator freezer is a French door Bosch refrigerator and a Bosch dishwasher. This is the downstairs half bath. Uh, it has uh, the hardwood floors. It has the antique vanity with the marble top and the polished brass sink. It also has the, uh, an antique mirror, an antique light fixture in there. As we go up, why don't you, uh, in order you don't fall, why don't you grab a hold of the walnut banister? It's elaborate. I think it also went in in the 1870s. It's a beautiful piece of wood and it curves around at the top and follows along. All right, so now we're on the second floor in the landing. Greg, let's talk about the living space. Let's do that. First, you'll notice the upstairs floor. They're all wide bean pine. They're pretty much throughout the upstairs except for the bathroom, the bedroom. 
As you walk down this way, you're going to see a custom-built closet. Let's go into the master bedroom. Now, the master bedroom uh, is a more formal room again. You'll notice it has a motorized skylight above. It also has an elaborate built-in uh, bookcase or display case. It has an East Lake mantle with fireplace. Greg, can I just talk about how when we're talking about an older home, this is such a modern amenity that you don't find in all these older homes. And to have this size bath and that size closet and you're combining the old world charm with really like a ton of modern amenities. Here. And that's really what you want to do. And you want to do it tastefully with respect for the building. For example, I do not have this home air conditioned because you would destroy the character of it, putting the air conditioning vents in it. So we use portable air conditioners, they work fine. And when we don't really need them, they're out of sight. You don't need them that often because the house is so heavy and massive, it stays pretty cool. The master bath, a couple things you might note, the stained glass window, the jacuzzi tub, the double shower, the double sink, the nice tile work, and a very large uh, linen closet. And we're gonna go into what you could call the second bedroom, though we use it as an upstairs office and den for my wife. So again, you, you, you see uh, a little bit smaller room. There's a built-in here. My wife displays her rabbits there. Built-in TV cabinet, so you can watch TV, yet it doesn't show. Another nice modern amenity is a second floor laundry room. And in here is the washer and dryer, is built in cabinet so you can store all your linen supplies. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's not what makes the house historic, it's what makes it livable. If you say that the other room is a quiet place for my wife, this is my quiet place, my man cave. An interesting feature in this house is these built-ins, which were built in the 1870s. When we had an architectural historian come in and examine the house about 10 or 15 years ago, he got all excited about these poles. Apparently they're original poles from 1870s, so they're extremely rare. Just a quick peek into the, the back bathroom, kind of a, a 1940s type looking bathroom, modern appliances, but the style, the look of the tile is about 1940. So we got a fourth bedroom with a view, a bathroom, and a whole bunch of privacy on the third floor. Absolutely, you know, perfect guest suite. Perfect suite for, you know, a kid who finished college and came back home, and none of you, nobody wants that, but these days it happens. One of the interesting things is the floor in here. If you think the floor downstairs are wide pipe boards, these are like 12 inches wide. Built-in window seats, a built-in uh, chest over here, uh, there's an enormous storage closet back there. And then in here is the upstairs uh, bathroom. As I mentioned earlier, I like to cook, and every good cook knows you, you have to have something really nice for dessert. So I've saved the best for last. This is a uh, wet bar, built-in wine racks, built-in cabinets, tile countertop, copper sink. Uh, when you have a big party, it's an ideal place to start serving. We've had a, a few times I tried to barkeep myself, but after a while the parties were too big and we just hired somebody to do it. And then uh, that opens up onto the Ratzkeller, which is the original cooking kitchen of the house. You'll notice a Dutch open place fireplace where food would have been cooked in the 1820s and 30s and 40s. There's a beehive oven where you would bake your bread. You notice the, the floor is all brick. The beams, the uh, uh, original beams that go back to 1827, um, perhaps even earlier, some of the beams down here still have the bark on them. And there's built-ins on both sides, uh, bookcases, display cases, and also on the, the other wall, and there are two closets, one closet, a front closet, and then another closet where I keep my extra cooking gear. And what's crazy about this is like, this is a very dry basement. Absolutely, we're above the 500 year floodplain. There has never been a drop of water here except when I spilt it. This is really a unique house. It's not the biggest house in the stockade, but it is a good sized house. It has been remodeled and cared for with love for almost 200 years. In one of the walk house tours we have, a woman came in and looked around and said, does anybody live here or is this a museum? But no, we live here and I throw my dirty socks around too.
We'd like to thank our gracious host here, Greg, and uh, for this magnificent tour of, of just a unique and special home. And uh, I think it's safe to say that this is one of the finest homes you're gonna find in the stockade. And again, we appreciate you giving us a tour here. Well, actually it was it was fun to do, Michael. You know, I love to show this house off. I'm, you know, uh, I'm proud of how my wife has decorated. I'm proud of how the house has been preserved for almost 200 years. And uh, as I said, it's been open many times and uh, it's really gonna be hard for us to leave it, but uh, age and, and, and other things says we have to find some new stewards for this house. Well, thank you so much for welcoming us into your home. I mean, we couldn't have done as good of a job as you just did, just bringing us through it. It was so great. Thank you so much. If you guys have any questions or if you'd like to set up a private showing, check out 19washington.com. And that right there is the home field advantage. Mm -hmm.